guys can still hear me, right? Uh, meeting yes. being recorded. I love it. Okay, and you can still hear me, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. I see all that. That is perfect. So, um, what I'm going to talk about uh, for the next 15 minutes or so are um, visual skills and sort of a little clinical update in dermatology. And uh, so, my disclosure: this is CME. Uh, I am uh, an associate editor for practiceupdate.com. Uh, it's a nice uh, Elsevier publication where we curate articles uh, each week. We, I, I'm associate editor on the dermatology channel, of course. Got to play your strengths. Uh, I'm an unpaid consultant to Visual DX just as a user, uh, really. And, and Visual DX is a software that uh, Neomed has subscribed to over this last year. So we have a 2021 contract. Uh, we we um, hopefully going to be teaching the new people uh, about this. Uh, it's I'll talk about it a little bit at the end. Simon has been exceptionally helpful at uh, organizing this uh, for Neomed. It's a it's a good thing. Uh, I am uh, the photos are mine or with permission of AAD or Visual DX. I am passionate about creating a culture of excellence at Neomed and a lot of places. Um, and I have no relevant pharmaceutical support. Uh, mute yourself if you have noise. However, you know, unmute yourself, you know, here and there, because I'd like some feedback on things and, and I'd like some participation if you can. Neomed, I don't need to tell you, I think you are all know where Neomed is. So I, I sometimes like to remind people where the heck it is in the middle of a farm field. Uh, since this is integrated care, uh, does anybody know who this uh, person is? Got some nice teeth hat. I do the Green Bay Packers famous that, coach. That is exactly Lamar. right, Barb. That's exactly right. And, and I'm not even a huge uh, football person, but famous coaches are, are famous coaches. And uh, I like this quote, people working together um, can do better. And, and that's what this integrated care is really about, in my opinion. So there, I, I'm not going to talk to you about all of these things. I, I'm, psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, acne, skin cancer, diversity, equity, inclusion, and, and, and that includes a piece of Visual DX uh, and COVID. So I won't talk to you about all of them because I've only got 15 minutes. So I'm gonna pick one. I won't tell you which one just yet. I'm gonna talk to you about A, B, C to start with because we all like outlines. I like outlines and structure as much as possible. And the A uh, today is gonna stand for art. Uh, the B is going to stand for birds and bird watching. And the C is going to stand for cooking. Now, when I first came up with this concept of thinking about um, ABCs, you know, as sort of a, a structural sort of piece, it was art, bird watching, and computers. But this was back in, oh, I first gave a lecture on this maybe 2003 or something like that. Um, and, and at the time, computers were more novel. Um, but but I saw just this year, I've changed it to cooking. Um, and in fact, I'm developing a TED talk for the Neomed TEDx event on the using art, uh, bird watching, and cooking to enhance the teaching and learning and visual skills. Uh, so here's the concept. Um, this, is, anybody know where this piece of art is? Let me see if I can see you guys now. So feel free to, uh, I, I would love some participation in unmuting. So either where it is or what it is. What's, what is this made of? Does anybody know this piece of art? It's one of my favorites and it is in Summit County. I will tell you that. Well, I'm smiling. I'm is, hoping some- is it, yeah. a, is it a tapestry? It is a tapestry. That is correct. Um, can you get a sense of what it's made of when you say tapestry? Um, it looks like it's made of some kind of like canvas kind of material. Yeah, it, it does have that look to it. Hi, first, let, let's take just a, a side route and um, we'll come back to what the material is in a, in a second. How might this relate to dermatology? Because I, what, dermatology is about seeing things, right? It, noticing things. Um, just like in, in sort of the, certainly the psychiatric world, you, you might notice uh, something that relates to anxiety or depression or something that, that I may or may not notice. We all get to have cues, uh, but we're doing visual skills today. How does this relate to dermatology? 
there, there's all kinds of um, textures, different um, elevations on it, different colors um, that are very subtle and changes. That's exactly right. And, and there are patterns to the whole story. There are areas that are, of course, linear. Uh, there's, you know, a, perhaps a big skin lesion, a, a big target lesion in, in the middle here. Um, and, uh, oh, I see Kit on here now, too. I, I might have missed it when you were introducing yourself. That's great. Hello there. Um, Hi. So, so and, and certainly different colors. Um, one of the things that, you know, we ask about lesion types with students all the time, and they say red, and I say, really, that that's red, you know, that, it, because they'll, they'll take a pink is not red, you know, we've got red here. Can you guys see my pointer when I do this? That's not, I, I asked a minute ago, anybody know this art? This is actually at, at the uh, Akron Art Museum. And um, it's one of my favorite pieces because when you get close to it, uh, you find out that it's all made from liquor bottle caps, the foil of liquor bottle caps. And it's made um, probably with cheap labor um, in Africa. And this artist, El Anatsui, is um, who's credited here at the bottom, El Anatsui, is just an amazing you know, artist who has set out on incredible projects around the world related to this. And, and I like it not only for its pattern and, and beauty, uh, but I like also that it speaks to addiction and problems with alcohol and the fact that we have all this background and other pieces um, to this. I, I'm sort of hesitant to turn on my video again here just for fear of removing things, but I, I, I can move my hands without you seeing me. Maybe I'd be distracting anyway. So um, I love this piece. And uh, if you've never been to the Akron Art Museum, it's generally in the back right corner section and, and it's a good one. Okay, uh, so you, you get the idea of shapes and art and seeing things and, and expanding from that. Now, bird on the left, bird on the right. Bird on the right is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna give you that one, the American bald eagle. Anybody know the bird on the left? Hawk. A uh, hawk, that's exactly right. A red-tailed hawk. Thank you, Moshe. I think that was you, right? So um, the, uh, now whether you knew this or not is not so critical, but you knew they were different. You knew they were both birds. Their beaks were a little bit different. The, the one is iconic. I mean, it's a snap decision. You, you knew that one there and you could move from there. And, and that's sort of the beginning part of what we all do in discriminating where we're at with uh, different things going forward. And, and I won't drag this one out uh, from you. Uh, house and, and those we like to entertain and, uh, and cook. This was a focaccia bread made by uh, one of my daughters. And uh, she likes, uh, she's always liked arts and crafts. And so nothing better than combining cooking with a little bit of art with peppers and onions and mushrooms and asparagus and, and putting things together. And of course, hopefully you can not only appreciate the art part of it, but you can smell that warm bread smell and a little bit of olive oil on it, maybe some pesto. And, and now you're doing something that's hopefully expansive to help you be a better clinician, observer, listener, because this is the whole deal. If you fall asleep here, you can go to learnderm.org, which is a, a part of the product of Visual DX, and it's a um, it, it's a great site for beginning to learn dermatology. Um, uh, ABCs, I also, uh, besides art, birds, and cooking, I, I like thinking that it has to do with attention, paying attention, being present, uh, and curiosity, and, and so sort of ties in in those kind of ways. So what's one of these am I going to do today? I'm going to do skin cancer, and that's going to be our piece, and I'll keep track of my timing. All right, so this lesion on the... Um, upper right here. Uh, any takers as to what this is? It's on the skin. Melanoma? 
That is a melanoma. So there are three types of skin cancer, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, melanoma. And hopefully everybody would say, gee, this just doesn't look like a normal skin lesion. This is a melanoma type of skin cancer. And this is a skin cancer that kills more people than uh, any other in the United States each year. I'll give, show you a few statistics in a couple of minutes as, as part of this. Um, and this is a well-demarcated sort of stuck on looking thing that's not a melanoma. melanoma. That's a mole. Or seborrheic keratosis, like in this case. Talk about how we as humans make snap decisions and how we get it right and how we get it wrong. Uh oh, have you lost me? Okay, good, because my, my internet, I got something that said my internet connection was not stable, which is very sad. I will definitely not turn on my video in the meantime. Um, worst come to worst, I'll connect on my phone at some point. We'll get in here. We'll try to get through the slides. Uh, so skin cancers, um, these are numbers. About three to five million basal cell carcinomas each year, a quarter, uh, 700,000 squamous cell carcinomas, uh, and uh, about 100,000 melanomas. Uh, few deaths from basal cell carcinomas, almost none. Um, 2,000 uh, deaths from squamous cell carcinoma and melanomas, uh, about uh, 7,000 deaths each year. Uh, and just, um, especially for the administrators, I'm gonna go ahead and just on the off chance that for some reason the internet stops and you can't hear me, I'm gonna give you my cell phone number. I'll give everybody my cell phone number, which is 330-730-730. Uh, 7304. So if for some reason you lose me, call me on that number and say, hey, we lost you because I, and I'll apologize in advance for internet instability. Okay, so that's our story. Um, so you have to find skin cancer. So most people would see this, but imagine just a piece of this as a shiny bump on the nose, a shiny papule. And this shininess is sometimes called pearly pearly because pearls shine. Um, and uh, it's a common spot for basal cell carcinomas. That's what this is. And you have to notice it and hopefully catch things like this before they turn this big and you need it cut out. And basal cell carcinomas generally don't spread internally. I mean, all, almost never. Um, but if you don't cut them out, they'll eventually start ulcerating and bleeding and, and being a problem. And so the general story is, especially on the nose or other areas, you, you cut them out, you destroy them. Sometimes you treat them with something called Mohs micrographic surgery. Uh, but it's worth also looking at this spot of sort of scaliness and little crusting that was treated as eczema for months and months and months. But it's not eczema. It's a superficial basal cell carcinoma. The point being, things can have different presentations. And this ties in with what I like to talk about, which about art. Um, you need to take a moment to breathe and say, what else could this be? And certainly if something or someone is not getting better the way you think they should, then you should take a moment and rethink the diagnosis. And, and that's, I suppose, one of the biggest pearls I, I can give out of a, a day like this. We all know this, uh, but we, I think in, in the world of clinical care, we don't do it often enough. Another classic looking basal cell carcinoma with a little ulceration in the center, sometimes called a rodent ulcer, as if a rodent was chewing out the central part. And then next to it, just a, a little benign seborrheic keratosis. These things on now on the back of the hand are little rough areas, keratotic lesions. Uh, ker keratosis comes from the Greek kerato for horn or something hard. And these are little hard lesions uh, that are sometimes considered precancerous spots. Um, they have a higher risk of turning into mostly squamous cell carcinomas. And you want to catch them before they become these large, ulcerated, ragged looking lesions that are squamous cell carcinomas on this person's hand. And you can see a, another actinic keratosis over here and what happened here. Another type of thing that someone thought was a wart, but in fact, with this kind of base to it is really another squamous cell carcinoma. These were diagnosed as warts to start with, but on this side, there's been malignant transformation. So instead of just HPV causing um, certain cervical cancers, and in fact, it, it can cause squamous cell carcinomas even on the hands. And, and you won't know that unless you're thinking about it. 
this nice lady was ready to get a big wedge excision out of her lip, uh, but came to us and said, is there another way of dealing with this? It was a rapidly growing lesion. And so we did a combination of curetting and interlesional methotrexate. And every year now she comes back to thank me uh, for this. I did this in con that in conjunction with a, a plastic surgeon, Dr. Larry Serino, who's recently retired. This is a scaly area on the back, again, not eczema. And in this case, not a basal cell carcinoma uh, because of the brown area that you're seeing in here. And this turned out to be a superficial melanoma um, with pink areas. So again, you have to rethink things. Another melanoma starting off looking almost like a seborrheic keratosis, but with pigmentation, really you can have a problem. Sometimes melanomas will have some central clearing to them. Obviously differences in color, sometimes they're more hazy. Um, again, looking any pigmented lesion that is um, different and, and changing. We, we commonly talk about things called the A, B, C, D, and E's of melanoma, and that stands for asymmetry, meaning it's lopsided. Uh, you can't cut it in half to be the same on both sides. Irregular border, irregular color. I used to, I also like just saying any changing mold. C can also stand for change. Um, diameter bigger than a pencil head eraser, or I remind people something that's different. Um, you know, is a, uh, an important piece. And um, E is for evolution, uh, nothing to do with uh, Darwin, uh, but something that's changing. So one more piece of art here for a moment, and then we'll come back to this. This is Jan Steen called The Sick Lady. And what I like about this really does tie in with uh, psychiatry and other things is he is um, taking the pulse of this nice woman who is a little bit yellow here in this painting. And, and if we were in a situation where I had you for more time, I'd pull more out of you. Uh, but he's actually uh, interestingly treating her for uh, lovesickness. Uh, this was uh, the treatises on lovesickness were popular in the 1500s. Um, but the thing I like is he's taking a moment to hold her hand and pay attention and care about her. And that's an extremely important part about all that we do. Uh, and of course, these days we have pieces on shaking. I think the last time. I'm going to send him a quick text. Every page and connect to this. Um, this gives you a chance to, oh, it's telling me my internet connection is unstable. I hope that doesn't... Uh, uh, I, I hope it doesn't cause problems. Um, Visual DX is, is a way of doing a couple of things. It lets you build a differential diagnosis. It lets you uh, look at things more than just skin, but you can enter all sorts of things. For example, you can enter multiple skin lesions or a rash or a single skin lesion or a fever and rash, a nail lesion, a hair lesion, and pick what it is. In this particular case, I clicked in a 50 to 59 year old female with multiple skin lesions and we can pick what the finding is, but here's where it gets really interesting. Uh, you can actually, um, these are, is what I picked, but you can now, instead of all, just all skin types, you can pick skin of color. And this is an area of um, what many people would call systemic racism. I mean, the textbooks for years have been written by people with lighter skin and showed pictures of people with lighter skin and really systematically didn't address issues for people of skin of color. And in one fell swoop, uh, the people at Vision C and helped see things as different in different skin types. Uh, and it makes a difference because you can't see it if you don't recognize it. Red looks different, pink looks different, brown spots and, and problems are, are different. Uh, and so it's a really important piece. And Neomed has a subscription right now, um, large, well, in this case, funded by a fund that I got uh, from a patient. Um, I'm hoping the, uh, to advocate for the uh, full medical university to consider this an important enough piece of education that it goes on uh, through them and not my fund, so I can devote that to something else. So I've talked about ABCs, art birds or bird watching and cooking today, hopefully to help you with visual skills. Um, this sculpture, which is of course amazing in, in Florence, Italy, uh, is an incredible reminder of uh, Michelangelo's David, but how we can see things from a distance and they have one perspective and the detailed level is, you know, everything. I mean, it, it's a whole different 
area of appreciation uh, and both matter. Um, so uh, with that and keeping within the short uh, presentation point, uh, I will uh, say that time is money and go from there and stop sharing my screen and release all.